Hi, my name is Jason King. I'm an applications engineer here at Amatech LMS, the Drexel Bar product line. Today we are going to be going over installing a retrofit kit for the Universal 5. Inside your retrofit kit, you will find several parts, wires, heat shrink, screws, and a probe adapter. You will need a small, fine, flat head screwdriver, a breaker bar that fits into a three quarter inch MPT hole, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a heat gun. If needed to replace the boot connector on your peak sensor, you will need a crescent wrench, a pair of channel locks, and a hammer of some sort. To remove the Universal 4 from its housing, you're going to use the Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew the two screws that are holding it down. Once they are out, you should just be able to lift the electronics straight from its housing. Underneath the electronics, there is a green backboard with two wires hooked into it. The screws here just need to be loosened. These are spade lugs and will pop out. You don't need to remove the screws entirely. And once you have them out, we can now remove the housing. So I'm going to use the heat gun here and we are going to heat up this housing until the Loctite breaks. So once it's heated, I'm going to put my breaker bar into one of the three quarter inch MPT holes and go counterclockwise until this conglet starts spinning free. So as you're spinning, make sure that your wires don't become tangled or kinked inside of the housing. But we're just going to rotate this off Again, being careful not to touch the neck, it is hot. So next we're going to cover replacing this plug if it does get damaged. And what we're going to do with the channel locks is pull the old spark plug off. <coughs> when you pull that off, you are most likely going to have this little cap that's from the inside of this stuck onto the sensor. So you're going to have to remove that as well. It will not uh, allow the other spark plug to go on. So I have the cap off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place our new plug onto the end of this sensor. And what I'm going to do with the crescent wrench is, is essentially hammer it down so that it seats completely over our coat shield terminal. So you slide the wires through and this will give you an area that you can use a hammer on. And you basically just tap it on. So next we're going to be installing the Universal 5 and its housing back onto the probe. If there's any material left in your threads, make sure you clean it out. Uh, you can use a wire brush or, you know, tap it out with a small screwdriver. Uh, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to remove the electronics from the Universal 5 housing. Again, you're going to take your Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew the electronics and it should pop right out of the housing. Next. What we want to do before we install the housing is put some uh, pipe thread, Teflon tape, some sort of sealant on these threads. Uh, that way we're not galling the threads as we screw it back on. So I'm going to give that just a little bit. Doesn't need to be too much, uh, just enough again so that the threads don't gall. Uh, again, as we are installing this, make sure that your wires do not twist and kink inside the housing that could cause damage. So we're going to slide the wires through the bottom of the housing, put it onto the sensor, and then we're just going to start to turn, again, ensuring that these wires do not twist or kink. So once I have this about hand tight, I'm going to use my breaker bar again to go about, you know, a quarter of a turn, maybe a half of a turn, 
loosen up our pipe vise here so that we can work on the inside of our housing. The blue wire is going to be put under the screw that says probe and the red wire is going to be put under the, the screw that says shield. So loosen them up. They don't need to come out all the way because these are spade lugs. And we are going to slide it underneath the screw and then just tighten that back up. What you're going to do with the excess cable is create a dog leg and then tuck it under the bottom of the wire so that it doesn't interfere with the seating of the housing. And then the red wire goes in as well. This is our dog leg hidden under the blue, uh, the blue terminal. Now we can install our electronics back into the housing. There is a pin connection on the back that is going to mate with the male pin connection inside the housing. And if you just line it up, it should drop right on. There's no click or engage. It will just seat almost flush with the housing. And then we are going to screw our screws down. Uh, we recommend that you do one screw about halfway, do the other screw, and then finish them both up. That way you don't cock the unit and prevent the other side from being able to be tightened down. Again, these are gonna go about hand tight and then an eighth of a turn. And we have completed the Universal 4 to Universal 5 retrofit. Uh, this is now ready to be installed into your tank, into the pipe or wherever it was. You can apply power uh, if you are still able to use a heart communicator to talk to your Universal 4 or Universal 3, you can grab the calibration data out of those units, put it into the Universal 5, and it will pick right back up where it was running.